gotta get up, I have a cramp. <laughs> All right, uh, my name is Eloy Sepero. I'm a uh, neighbor of uh, Emilito Izquierdo, and you can see how P the Pedro Pan experience, he, st he remained in Cuba, he went to UMAP, and my brothers and I had probably the most rewarding experience of any Pedro Pan. When I, <clears throat> the first time I was interviewed by Yvette Conde in the flat of the Pedro Pan, she said, I'm going to interview you for 15 minutes, she stayed with me for about three hours. We were so lucky because, and I, and I think uh, uh, life and destiny has a lot to do with it. Uh, I come from a very, <clears throat> uh, una familia humilde, uh, uh, campesina, that uh, my grandfather told my, my uh, parents. Uh, he uh, became a very wealthy person and all he knew how to do was just write his, his name. And he sent all three kids to the University of Havana. One be, uh, became an attorney, my father. My aunt became the uh, uh, doctor in pharmacy, and the other one became a teacher at the University of So he said, I want to uh, send, if you let me pick the school for these kids, I will pay for their education. There were three of us. So he said, I want El Rubio, which is me, <laughs> to go to an American college, to an American school in Havana, because I think he, he promised a little bit. My two other brothers, they, they were not so ambitious as I was as a little kid. So actually he decided to send me to the school because he wanted us to learn English. And the school was Candler College. It was, uh, everybody knows about uh, Roston Academy and Candler College. Where, uh, the Candler College was such a large school, they had 14 blocks, okay? Uh, we had 36 bus that will pick up the kids. And we had a great number of uh, Jewish uh, students like Marco. Uh, he never went to uh, co uh, Candler College, but he went to the Colegio Israelí in La Habana. But when the Operation Pedro Camps, uh, uh, when, the, uh, oper uh, when the situation in Cuba after the Bay of Pig invasion, in my hometown, they picked up a lot of, uh, uh, and Emilito can uh, be a witness to that, they picked up everybody, they put them in the, uh, in the theater in a horrible condition. My father said, I have to get, my mother said, we have to get the kids out of Cuba. And my father said, oh no, you're not uh, sending the kids away. So <laughs> my mother said, he went to the attorney and prepared the divorce paper. And he shut up with the divorce paper. I said, either they go or I'm divorcing you. And so immediately my father, which I think he was very much in love with my father, with my mother, he, uh, he let us go. Uh, we had, if uh, anybody who remember, May 1st, 1961, that's when they intervened all the school, right after the Bay of Pigs, uh, April 17. A month later, we went to Havana to, uh, to uh, clean up, to pick up all the stuff that we had at the school, and then uh, the uh, director, which uh, Carlos Perez Ramos, who is, a, is one of the top uh, Methodist uh, preachers and uh, educators in Cuba, uh, he told my uh, mother, we have to get the kids out of here. So he prepared our, our, uh, our grades. So he gave us grades so we could, uh, as soon as we get out of the uh, 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 Cuba, we can immediately start in a, uh, in a, in a school. So they notified the, um, the, the United Methodist uh, uh, Church in Coral Gables, the largest one. And uh, uh, they said there's three Cuban boys coming from uh, Havana, and, uh, and we want three families to take care of them. And so Mrs. Smith, the wife of Margaret Smith, one of the 100 most important person in the United States, chairman of the Board of Florida Power Life, vice chairman of Eastern Airlines, president of the Federal Reserve in Atlanta, member of the Atomic Energy Commission. Uh, she, went, she got out of church and went to see uh, Tio. He says, uh, Greg, I want to, there's three Cuban boys coming from, from Cuba, and I want to take all three of them, and, and, and he said, you're crazy, how about the black? Because <laughs> they were actually from Tennessee. There was a little uh, racial uh, discrimination there. And he, he said, no, mama, there's no way I'm going to take three kids, and you don't know whether they're all the white and black. And, and so she started crying, said, I want to take the three boys. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to separate them. So... He just started crying and immediately said, okay, mama, let's go get him. So they went to talk to the pastor. And here we go to the, uh, 
the Operation Pedro Pan, uh, George because my little brother, and my brother and I had to go to Volpalaca for a debriefing because we were a little uh, tough. But the minute we come to this house, uh, we, we had a mate, we had a chauffeur, and we had a butler. <laughs> so, in Coral Gables, Florida. So, so uh, I said, oh my God, I told my, uh, then my brother, my older brother, which I, he kept telling me, you better behave because <laughs> if you don't behave, they're going to throw out of this house. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have our own cook, anything. Uh, anyway, immediately the, uh, the, uh, the Mr. Smith got, uh, put himself a, uh, a Spanish dictionary in English, uh, and we became such a close family. He never had a chance to take care of his two, uh, two bro uh, boys that he had, so he, he, he put all his love in all three of us. And uh, immediately, uh, Eloy, what do you like to do? Well, I like to play the conga and uh, love to music, so he started my uh, collection of Cuban music. I have the second largest collection of Cuban music in the United States. And today I'm a, a musical historian <coughs> and giving conference and, uh, and lectures uh, through the university. But and, and my other brother, uh, he said, well, he's an intellectual. We sent him to, to school. My brother graduated from FIU, from the um, uh, University of South Florida, and the little one from uh, the University of Tampa. And, uh, but the, the importance about the love of this, this person, in which he guided me, when I finished uh, the University of Miami, first I got a scholarship and then track and field. And when I finished, he said, now you have to serve in the Army. Because I'm going to, knowing that you're going to be in the army, I'm going to be sleeping very well at night. If you don't go, then I, I won't be sleeping very well. So anyway, he forced me. The minute I come back from after my two years in the tour, he says, now I want you to go ahead and, and uh, do your master's in finance. Because I graduated in, in, in finance with a minor in Latin American history. And he forced me to actually get my master in, in finance. Uh, he helped me so much that he said, uh, two things I want you to learn in life. Number one is when you walk into a place, you always walk like you own the place. <laughs> Number two, whenever you talk to somebody, smile. That will open all the, all the doors for you. And number three, uh, do as every time you have a chance to help somebody, do it. And uh, one day I asked him, and I said, how can we repay you? He said, every time you help somebody, you will be repaying me. And uh, when I was selected to the uh, Coral Gable High School uh, Hall of Fame, and, and I told the kids uh, how much this guy meant to us, my two brothers and myself, uh, it was such a rewarding experience that since then we've been helping everybody, including <coughs> teaching. The, we have a, 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 an organization called uh, Alpha Lead, Alpha, Alpha Lead International. And which has been uh, educating uh, kids all over the uh, all, all over the uh, the uh, Latin America, and we started that in Cuba, and today's uh, I think it's the 60th year. And I'm telling you this because it's such a rewarding. Uh, we were so lucky to be uh, to be part of this family, and 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 the way he he said you always you have to strike to the highest. And at age 35, I was president of a bank. He pushed me so hard. There he said, you've got to be the best bank in Miami. At age 35, I was in charge of a bank. And uh, so then after that, I said, well, I guess uh, I changed a little bit now. I'm into music. And uh, uh, I published a book called Relato de una Familia Cubana from uh, Bahia Onda to Iceland, where I served. And, uh, and I, like Carlos uh, uh, Eder was saying today, everybody should write their own story. I wrote my story, it's about 260, and uh, my, my wife said, nobody's gonna buy your book, I sold over a thousand, and people love it, anybody who wants it, please let me know and I will give it to you. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for the...